Well, hello everyone. Now, a while ago I had a video and I showed you a chiller running from a variable frequency drive, but I said that you could run almost any refrigeration system with a variable frequency drive. And today, finally, we're going to show you. And it starts outside with this condensing unit. We'll talk more about specifics about that in a minute, but the first thing that you need to know about it is that it has a three-phase compressor instead of a single-phase one. I said that you could use a single-phase compressor with a VFD, and you can, but see the thing about this condensing unit is the compressor was bad. So we replaced it with a three-phase compressor. Now let's take a look inside and see more of the specifics about the setup. Okay, the first part is actually pretty simple. What's used to control this, although we have a variable frequency drive and a temperature controller, ultimately the control comes down to this. It's actually just a regular thermostat. If you turn it to cooling and set the temperature, it will cool to whatever temperature that you want it to cool, and then it will turn off all the systems when it is satisfied with the temperature that it's reached. But now we will see the variable frequency drive and the temperature controller. Okay, so this is the variable frequency drive that we're using to run the compressor. It is damaged, yes, and very oversized, but the point is that it does work for our demonstration purposes. And we have the minimum frequency output set to 30 hertz, and the maximum frequency output is set to 70 hertz. And I find that's usually a pretty safe range for a compressor. Um, 40 to 70 hertz would be okay. The compressor is rated from 50 to 60, but so far I've been running the compressors, multiple compressors like this, and it seems like they are okay with 30 to 70 hertz. Okay, now in this enclosure we have two contactors and we have a temperature controller. The bottom contactor is the contactor that starts the outdoor condenser fan. We could put a variable frequency drive on the condenser fan if we wanted to, but during my tests I find that is not necessary for the most part. The contactor on the top is one that completes the circuit for the drive's starting terminals, so when that contactor is engaged then the drive is commanded to start. And then at the top is a temperature controller. And the temperature controller can be set to pretty much any temperature between 160 and 40 below and the temperature sensor is actually strapped onto the suction line we're turning into the compressor so we can set that to any temperature we want but we can't just put in any number we want we have to get the right one we need a little guidance on getting the right temperature okay so today for our guidance I have my boss and my father, an expert in refrigeration and air conditioning. And can you tell us what would you set the temperature controller to for the suction line temperature? In my opinion, having a 59 degree suction line is just about perfect. It works well. It's not too cold. It's not too hot. You get a good temperature difference in the evaporator. And I believe that any colder causes maybe some damage to the compressor. Any warmer will cause damage to the compressor also. You don't want it to get it too cold and you don't want to get it too hot. So what happens what what happens to the compressor if it gets too hot? The motor windings overheat. Yeah, and what happens what happens if it gets too cold? you could be getting liquid refrigerant back and that would cause flooding of the compressor which if liquid gets into the valves liquids cannot get be compressed and that will cause the valves to break sounds pretty good to me so if our temperature controller right now what temperature should we set it at 59 set it at 59 degrees all right well let's then do that we will set it and how long have you been doing refrigeration and air conditioning? 25 years. And that's older than I am. <laughs> All right, guys, now you've heard it. Okay, so we switched the air conditioner on, and it's about 80 degrees outside. And 
we see the motor controller is now running at 30 cycles but we still need to set the temperature controller and we will set it to 15 Celsius as recommended. Okay as you can see it's already at 16 Celsius so if we command it to go one degree lower it should speed up. As you can see, it's, it sped up and then it slowed down as soon as it got to 15 Celsius. So it does respond pretty fast. It's a pretty powerful system, but it does work. Let's try a lower temperature and see if we can make it speed up and slow down again. Okay, that's set to 10 Celsius and it's 14 Celsius now. All right, so it's reaching its set point and the compressor is starting to slow down. And that's warmed up a little bit, so it's rising back up again to match the demand. It's not perfectly accurate and it's very hard to get the right temperature response. This is what it's like when it's working and tuned correctly. As it's working, it will make very small adjustments to the output speed. It won't be making wide swings all over the place. It should just barely go above the minimum output normally, as it's doing now, and then come back down relatively quickly. If you make too many adjustments too quickly then it will go up too high and then come back down very quickly. And that's really just a waste of energy. This is the air handler. Just if you're curious, it's also pretty normal. It's actually a gas burning furnace. The only thing it really has special has a variable frequency drive built into the blower so it will automatically ramp up and down and soft start just like the compressor will. Okay, so we saw it working, we saw the motor controller control the compressor according to temperature. But the big question is at this point, does it save money like I said it would? The answer is yes, it definitely does. I'm going to tell you some more specifics about the air conditioner, the condensing unit, and the indoor part now. The outside part is a two and a half ton heat pump, but I replaced the compressor with a three ton three phase compressor. The indoor coil is a three ton evaporator, but the it is a capillary tube system. It had the orifice changed to a larger five ton opening. So normally, if you were to run this, it would use somewhere around 2,400 watts. That's without any motor controller on it. But when we run it down at 30 hertz it actually only uses 960 watts and it still gets a very good cooling effect most of the time it's only on the really hot days when it starts to speed up so it does save quite a lot it really cuts it in half and more than cuts it down to a fraction of what it normally uses and before we had the system we had a different system like a, a two-ton system and it wasn't new like this one and it used 2400 watts and it didn't give the same cooling capacity so now we have the choice we can use less than that we can use 960 watts or we can use more than that and it's all automatic as I showed you it's all controlled from a thermostat regularly like you would normally run an air conditioner the only real big problem with it is the tuning of it like I explained earlier it's difficult to get the right tuning but there's a method and this is my method for the tuning. What you want to do normally is find the lowest point that you would want your thermostat to be and run the motor controller and the variable frequency drive manually. Run it at minimum output manually until you reach the temperature that you want, the lowest temperature you want, and then set it there. And the suction line should be within 
about 50 to 60 degrees or between 10 and 15 Celsius. If it's within that range then you can set it there and then from there when you turn the thermostat on it will normally ramp up the compressor until it gets to that point till it gets between 10 and 15 Celsius or about 50 and 60 Fahrenheit and if it gets hotter outside and there's a greater load on the building then it will slowly start to build up that speed and I think that's the best way to do it because as I explained otherwise it'll just be moving all over the place it'll output too much power and then it won't output enough and it'll just be moving around what you want to do is get it right in the middle where it needs to be at minimum output preferably I guess I shouldn't say the middle probably the low end so you want most of the time it to be running at the low end and not at the high end and there are several more reasons that you want it to run at the low end so not only does running it at the low end more often than running at the high end save you energy but it also helps increase the life of all the components because there will be less current moving to the motor controller, less current in the compressor and there will also be a longer run time, it will run for a longer time instead of just turning on and turning off very quickly again. This is important because the more often that the machine, the air conditioner, switches on and off, the less life will actually be. Because when it's on, it cools down and then when it's off, it heats back up again. And all of those expanding and contracting actions due to the temperature change will eventually cause it to break. So, at this point you might be saying, what if we just got a smaller unit altogether and it would run a long cycle? Well that's a good idea, except for when it gets very hot, because then it may not have enough capacity to keep up. And that's the great thing about this system, is that it's a small system with a low capacity when you need it to be, and it's a big system with a very high capacity when you need it to be. And again, it's all about the tuning. Now, it, one question that people are bound to have is how much does all this really cost? Well, if you were to buy all this stuff new, it would be very expensive. But, all the things that I got, believe it or not, the condensing unit is a two and a half ton heat pump, like I said. And believe it or not, I actually got that for free. Because we went to one of our local suppliers and they had some scrap units because that one didn't work, the compressor didn't work in it and instead of scrapping them because they would have to load up a truck and pay some men to go and drive it out and the fuel costs and all that they said you can just take it so they were gracious enough just to give it to us and then since the compressor was bad then I had to buy a compressor for it so I went to the surplus store and I found they had a compressor, it was a three phase three ton compressor and it was actually remanufactured, it didn't look like it's been used and that, I got that for just about fifty dollars. I did have to buy the evaporator, the indoor coil. Had to spend about two hundred on that and I also had to buy the new copper lines probably somewhere around a hundred dollars for that. Then I had to pay for the oil change. The change the oil in the compressor which was about fifty dollars. The variable frequency drive motor controller was only about twenty dollars because it did look very damaged on the outside. I got that from a surplus store. But I took it apart, looked at the inside and it wasn't even dirty. It was perfect. So, if you do some looking around and some searching, yes, you can make this work and it doesn't really cost that much money compared to these big especially compared to a new system with all these controls in it. It could be thousands. So, I thank you for watching and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or you want to see any other part of the system, just ask me and we will speak soon.